I've decided to kill myself. I think it's important someone understands why, so I'm making this video before I blow my head off. The first time I remember it happening, I was nine. Johnny Weller and I were playing in his backyard. The sun was setting over his back fence, warm oranges and reds shining through the bone, white slats like a crimsicle against pearly white teeth. Johnny was the cowboy and I was the dirty red skin, stealing his horse. We ran around the swing set, him laughing and me whooping and threatening to scalp him. When he tripped, I ran to where he laid in the dirt, scooping up a handful of air, pointing my finger at his nose and proclaimed, I got your gun now. Bang. Johnny's head exploded in a tremendous blossom of crimson blood, slate gray brain and chips of skull that sparkled in the setting sun. My hand fell to my side, and I stared, open-mouthed, unable to understand what just happened. Someone was screaming. At first, I thought it must be Johnny's mother, until she tore open the back door and I realized I was the one screaming. Johnny's mother crumpled against her son's headless body, adding her broken sobs to my horrified cries. Johnny's funeral was the next week, closed casket. I forgot the sparkling light shimmering across the cloud of Johnny's blood. I forgot Johnny's mother ragdolling my little body, begging me to tell her what happened to her son. I forgot the sheriff telling my mother Johnny was hit by a falling bullet. One of 26 cases each year. I forgot my father's quiet talks with my mother about how they never found the round that spattered Johnny's smile across the grass. I adjusted. I coped. I forgot. I didn't forget the next time it happened. I never played cowboys and Indians again. In fact, I can't remember a single instance of any shooting game played by little boys anywhere in my childhood. I do remember the little girl in the park pop pop popping her little nerf balls as she bounced around. She ran up to me, brandishing the weapon and shouting, Hands up! I smiled and complied, dropping my sandwich in mock terror. I lifted my hands to the sky and petitioned for mercy. A true homicidal maniac in the making. She executed me with a flurry of staccato pop-pop-pops. I dutifully played dead, sprawling across my bench. She giggled and proclaimed, Your turn. Shoot me. A sudden sensation of intense discomfort slithered up my spine. I thought of flowers, glittering crimson roses, wet with morning dew. She eyed me impatiently, apparently convinced she might have to nerf me once more to provoke a response. I lifted my finger weakly, pointed at her, and whispered, Bang! This time, I wasn't the one screaming. Her mother cradled her baby's dismembered limbs, frantically clutching an arm, then a leg. I had pointed my finger at the little girl's belly button. The moment the word left my lips, she ruptured like a water balloon filled with punch and soaking bits of crimson-colored fruit. Johnny Weller's decapitated body filled my vision, the slow red of sunset sliding down the front of his striped shirt. I ran. I can't do this anymore. I got pissed at Laura yesterday and put my finger in her face to tell her off. I didn't even say it. I couldn't bring myself to sop my girlfriend's brains off the kitchen floor. I can't do this anymore. All I have to do is put my finger against my temple and say it. At least I'll go out with a bang.